a kangaroo fern production coming up next on miko santos inside yeah. job so you the storytelling is critical in terms of engagement you want people to be interested i mean if they turn on their phones and they listen to your show and it's not engaging in terms of relatability um you know humor or or value there are certain things that people are looking for and everyone's different but you know they're looking for something and if they don't find it within the first 30 seconds of your show then they're out right they don't want to listen to your show Please welcome to the Inside Job podcast, Eric Cabral. How are you today, Eric? Wonderful, Miko. Thank you so much for having me. So I know you've been su- you've been successful on your industry from real estate investment to creating this big brand, Podmax, and also you have your own agency that is uh, on air brands. How did you get to where you are today? Yeah, I mean it started out slowly, uh, but then also relatively quickly, uh, depending on your point of view. But I, I was in corporate America, hustle and grind 20 plus years, uh, doing it every day uh, with no real intention of starting businesses. Although my real estate and business mindset and entrepreneurial DNA was always there, hidden and crying to come out because I was starting side businesses. I was creating uh you know things uh, projects on the side while i was working full time in order to satisfy that and scratch that itch uh eventually i answered that call after being 20 uh i'm sorry being laid off for the second time which i always say i was truly blessed because you know a 20 plus year career only being laid off twice is truly a blessing so that was really when i did an audit of my life and finances and realized through conversation with my wife and my my wife's blessing to to take a risk start my own business yeah she said let's do it you know i i have confidence and trust in you and that you could build and you can grow something what are you thinking and i said yeah you know she's assuming that i'm going to do creative you know from the creative industry i'm like i'm going to do real estate investing and she's like are you out of your mind you don't know anything about investing <laughs> So it was a crash course in brain surgery, trying to figure everything out in the course of a year and uh, acquiring my first uh, multifamily bi- uh, building. And once I did that, Miko, the sky was the limit because my limiting beliefs uh, started to fade away uh, and my confidence started to build. And from there, On Air Brands, the media agency, which creates podcasts um, and produces them. And then also uh, the podcast industry, event called Podmax was born uh, shortly after. So yeah, it was it was all from just saying yes and, and getting approval from my wife. So can you tell us about how this Podmax created since you've been real investing and then you see the potential of doing a podcast to for a brand awareness for your business? How the Podmax created Yeah, with with Podmax, same thing as as with on air brands, you know, creating podcasts for people. It happened organically. It wasn't really necessarily by design. It was a test drive. I I knew that I had podcasts in my network because I was producing their shows, and these people became close friends and partners. And I would easily get guests. You know, I'd network, go to go to events, and people would go, "Oh, you know this person? You know that person?" I'm like, "Yeah." Uh, I, I'll introduce you. And they would get on my friend's shows. So eventually I said, why don't I just invite everyone to the office, to where we work, and everyone in one day can record on a show. Um, and it ended up being very successful, Miko, because it wasn't just one show. We were recording five shows in one day. So as a guest, you were getting introduced to five amazing podcasters who all have their own businesses. And then all these podcasters were coming and they were getting getting great content and introductions to potential clients and business partners. People were finding business partners at this event. So it wasn't a company at the time. It was really just an offshoot of on-air brands and the service there. And I was building an on-air brands network. Uh, 
Eventually I had to create a separate company because I realized um, it's an events, it's an event. It's an events company. It's not a production house like on your brands. So they sort of split over time because the teams were very, they were drastically different because the creation of podcasts takes a very specific sort of skill set in audio engineers, right? Project managers, graphic designers. But those people don't necessarily translate well to a live event, now a virtual event, you know, where you're running the show. It's a production, right? Everything has to look perfect from the front end because you know like you go to a broadway play you know it's beautiful you're enjoying the show but on the back end everyone's running around it's like a busy beehive so that those were totally different models and totally different teams that i had to really construct so that um we could build and grow and expand we're still on on, on pandemic right now so what are the challenges have you had to overcome about uh, along your way to be successful in business Yeah. Uh, well, we had COVID. <laughs> we had 2020, which um, threw us for a loop because we were doing live events. But it ended up being a blessing for us because we doubled down on virtual, which we weren't planning to do anytime soon. So that that is a failure that became a success relatively quickly uh, because now we had exposure to the world as opposed to local local entrepreneurs and business owners. People started to fly in, honestly, Miko, from, from LA, from Colorado, uh, you know, from the East Coast, you know, Boston. So we were gaining traction and, and visibility and brand awareness uh, on a national level. But when we went virtual, we started to get people from Europe, you know, Australia, uh, people zooming in um, from all over, you know, d didn't matter what the time zone was, they, they, they wanted to be in the event. Um, but then also our keynote speakers, uh, had an easier access. We didn't have to fly them in. We didn't have to pay for their way to get, you know, limoed into an event. They now just could just be in the comfort of their own home and, and, and keynote from their living room, you know? So that was great because now we had access to, to more people and more br bigger brands like VaynerMedia. Uh, they, they were able to share on our platform and, and just pour into our community a ton of value. So that's really been the blessing. Uh, failures, I mean, really is, is growing pains. You know, what do we do now that, you know, our budget is increasing? What do we do now that more people want to get in the door? Uh, how do we handle and fulfill all of the, the, uh, the wants and needs of our, our clients? So that's really what we're, we're sort of, um, building now, like scaling scalability and teams and processes so that it's well-oiled. The, all the whole machine is well oiled. So that's, that's sort of a hiccup that we had because we did not prepare well for scale. Um, and now we're currently in that mode of like hyper growth and scale. We're going back to the pod max. W w w can you tell us the overview and what is the difference of this uh, pod max from other virtual event or event yeah. on in line with yeah. the podcasting? So other events, um, from my understanding, don't do what we do in terms of uh, training, sort of like speaker training, but it's it's training to tell your story and have clarity in your story and message on podcasts. Like delivering your story like this on a podcast versus delivering your message on a stage are drastically different. So we help people to identify, clarify their messages and their stories so that they they're effective when they tell when when they get on these podcasts. So that's before the event. And then the event, we record podcasts live. You know, imagine if there's 20, 30, 40 people who are recording on shows, multiply that by three because they're recording on three shows. You know, we're getting dozens and dozens and dozens of podcasts recorded in one day, right? So so that is unlike any event virtually or live. Where, where you come in, you're trained to speak and have confidence on podcasts. Then you record throughout the course of the day. And then in between, you're doing high-level mastermind type networking with like-minded individuals, all doing amazing things in different categories of business, whether it's investing or marketing um, you know, or podcasting as a business. They're all there and they're all helping each other. They all find ways to complement each other. Um, and then the community is there. So you have a community that you can tap into um, to inspire you, to learn, to grow. And then you have the keynote speakers. So it's like, it's a chock full of, of, 
amazing content and people all in one day, which no one else is doing. So you're saying about storytelling on on yeah. podcasting. So what is your advice to people who is starting a podcast either for their self or for their business? Because some of the podcasting who's creating right now, sometimes they just create and that's it. And why is very important the storytelling in podcasting? Yeah. So you the storytelling is critical in terms of engagement. You want people to be interested. I mean, if they turn on their phones and they listen to your show and it's not engaging in terms of relatability, um, you know, humor or, or value, there are certain things that people are looking for and everyone's different, but you know, they're looking for something. And if they don't find it within the first 30 seconds of your show, then they're out, right? They don't want to listen to your show. Um, but as a podcaster getting started, I recommend just get started, like do it. Don't worry about all, don't get hung up on all the details because it will paralyze you, you know, analysis by paralysis. And, and I always encourage people, whether you're a real estate investor or a podcaster, just do it, like jump in the, the deep end and just figure out how to swim. Once you start to figure out how to swim, then you can get into the technique. Then you can get into the, the methodologies and, and, and the strategies behind it because you've gotten the hard part out of the way, you know, just turning the mic on and feeling like you have value and worth. It's a, it's a mental game, Miko. People think, why would I have a podcast? I have nothing to say or no one has any interest in what I have to say. That's BS because you are a unique individual that has unique experiences that no one else has had. And you need to share those stories, even if it's just for you. You know, because there's a way to document the journey. That's why people journal. That's why people write it in diaries. It's a therapeutic method that's effective. And if the podcast is nothing other than that, then you won. You know? And if people show up, that's even better. And you know? um, that's your right. So because podcasting, I remember one of the marketing gurus said podcasting is the new blogging. Yeah. It, 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 there's definitely some truth into that because although blogs are still there and they're effective and it's a wonderful outlet for people to be creative, if your writing is your thing and that is your, your superpower, keep blogging. You know, there, there's, there's benefits definitely with doing that. But podcasting has become a tool and I just want to highlight it as a tool. It's a marketing tool to leverage for you to create quickly and then also to Trans transcribe and create more content through blogs, through video, micro content. There's just so many wonderful things that come from a podcast through one recording. You can create a massive amount, a library of content from one interview or one, one podcast, even if you're a solo podcast. What is your opinion about imposter syndrome? So why yeah. say, why pushing yourself out for, for your comfort zone? that will only lead to uh, a great success or greatness because some people would want to do a podcast, but they don't know because of the imposter syndrome, even they have their own skill as well. I, I, I like in podcasting or anything that you want to do that you haven't done before to the gym. You can go to the gym. Let's say, you know, you're, you're overweight, you know, you're out of shape. You're somewhat sad and depressed because you're not healthy um, and, and, and doing regular exercise. So if you show up to the gym and everybody looks beautiful, right? That's intimidating. I get it. Like, oh my goodness, everybody, I'm going to leave. I'm going to turn around. I'm going to walk away. Fine. That's on you. That's up to you. That's your choice. It's the same thing with podcasting. Even though people sound amazing and look amazing and they seem like they have, I didn't start out from birth as a podcaster. I just like anyone out there who's listening, who's never been had a show. I, there was a time where I had zero shows. I had never done podcasting ever in my life. This was not my profession. So what you hear, what you see right now is someone that started from nothing, just like you. Here's the thing though. Those people at the gym didn't, they weren't born like that. They had to go and put the reps in. They had to go and commit to the daily grind activities and discipline in order to achieve what you see as a win. So 
I've been podcasting for three or four years now. So of course I've got, I've got a lot of experience and confidence in what I do, but I didn't start off like that. I literally, if you go back to my very first episode of Entrepreneur Circle, I'm in my basement talking on my phone. And I'm like, I don't know what's going to come to this walking around in my basement. Um, and a lot of, um, uh, um, I don't know, you know, that's where I started. And I love it because if you leave it there, you have contrast, you have something to compare, just like people love those before and after whenever, uh, they do a, a house renovation. People love those shows. They're addicted to those shows. Why? Because you get the before and after all in the course of 30 minutes. Like, look at that crap. That house was a, was, was, was a big pile of garbage. And now look at it. It's beautiful. I would live there. So that's kind of what's cool about doing this in any format, whether it's podcasting or blogging or doing video, whatever it is, if you document your journey and you keep it up there, it's a way to celebrate wins because now you saw where you came from and the progress. So on your entrepreneurial journey in, in this space of podcasting and real estate, who are your three people who has been, say, most influential to you? Oof, so many. Ay, ay, ay. I'm so blessed to, to have access to some of these people. Number one, that, that's Gary V. Gary Vaynerchuk. Um, when I stepped out of the corporate environment, he was a soundboard. He, he, was, he, was, he was that beacon of light for me to like, oh my goodness, I, I need to level up. I, I don't know anything about social media and I don't know how to promote myself and I don't know about documenting the journey. So he planted that seed in my mind, document the journey, right? So I've been doing that ever since. Uh, throughout that course, I was in real estate investing. So I, I stood out amongst that community because they were not documenting the journey. They were not podcasting or doing social media marketing. So I became the thought leader in that space in within uh, investors, right? Who weren't doing it. So he's number one. Mindset is everything, right? You can't do any of this if you're down on yourself, if you're depressed, if you're always like walking around with limiting beliefs. You know, Tony Robbins, who was a, was a big sort of in, inspiration in, uh, for me and motivation, uh, motivational speaker and content, all there for free on YouTube. There was a time where you had to buy cassettes and listen in your car or CDs and put it in and you'd have to spend money for Tony Robbins content. Now it's all free on YouTube all day, every day. Uh, I, I'm so blessed to be able to go to his last, he's doing an event. It's live in Florida this year and it's the last one he's done. He's only going to do virtual events and he's probably just going to retire, put his toes in the sand and you know drink my ties. So he, he, those two are huge influence on my life. You know, of course, my family, my friends, my, my wife, especially gave me all the love and support that I needed in order to continue when I was down on myself, when I was this real estate stuff's not going to work, you know, literally like crying on my hands and knees. I wanted to quit because it was so taxing and scary. And I didn't know what I was doing at the time. She was there to support and say, no, keep going, keep doing this. You can do it. And then once I broke through, right, once there's a breakdown, there's always a breakthrough. Then I was like, whew, everything opened up, all these other companies. So how did you deal with, with a setback and, and how to keep your a positive mindset when things go wrong? Oh, so good. Great question. Uh, it doesn't happen overnight. And when you find solutions, because there's multiple, it's a daily practice, right? So mindset, spiritually, mentally, physically, that's a daily practice for me. I get up at 5.30 every morning and I follow the blueprint. You know, my, my friend Hal Elrod, who wrote this Miracle Morning, you know, set that tone and, and framework for me. I modified it to fit me and my schedule. But getting up early, I saw every successful entrepreneur on the planet got up early, right? So 5.30 became a new thing for me, thanks to uh, the pandemic, because I was not consistent until then. <laughs> and then I started to wake up. And then when I got up, I'm like, what am I gonna do with this time? No one's awake, literally, uh, my neighborhood in my house. Then I started to meditate. I started to do a daily practice of meditation. And then I started to do a daily practice of yoga. And those two things in combination, Miko, that was a, that was a life changer. Now, when the crap hit the fan and life tested me, I was able to get through it, right? Without stressing, without putting my fist through a wall, without screaming at my, my wife, because I was grounded on daily practice and meditation and breathing and exercising and eating right. Because once you get into that path, 
your mind understands, okay, don't eat that garbage because now you're working against, you know, weeks and months of training. Uh, so it's just getting into habits and daily rituals is really the hard part. So do you still experience burnout? I know, I know you've been busy with your agency and you have a different podcast show. How would yeah. you say? Option? Recognizing the signs okay. is, is key. Self-awareness is really powerful. So the more you can become self-aware and understand yourself and recognize the signs that, um, you know, red flags that you're, you're about to break down or you're working too much and that you need to take time off, um, that's, that's critical. So I noticed that. So some of my red flags, I start to swear a lot. If I'm dropping F-bombs in a conversation, I'm like, I think I'm stressed, right? Or, or people around me know, oh, Eric's getting angry. He's swearing a lot. Those are red flags. I'm like, so then I start to recognize, oh yeah, I didn't sleep that much this week or I didn't go to the gym this week, things like that. And I'm like, okay, I got to get next week. I get it. And understand and know and, and, and be, be easy on yourself. Like, don't be so hard on yourself. If it, every day is different, every week is different. So understand like, okay, next week's a, ne another, that's a new week. I'm going to get back on the horse and I'm going to you know get back to what I was doing that's working. But allow yourself time to, to yeah, to, 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 you know, experience those things because we're all human and we're going to experience hardships. The, 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 the critical thing is getting to the point where when it happens, you're able to get through it easier than if you didn't have daily practices and rituals. Thank you for that. So we go into yeah. deep dive on, on the podcasting space right now. W what is your opinion about, say, we know that there's going to be uh, Apple subscriptions, also Spotify, Spotify doing that as well. And the biggest happening right now is that Facebook is doing a similar audio as well. Like they have a similar clubhouse and also like a tab in the Facebook page that have a podcast itself. What is your opinion on that one? Yeah. So, I mean, any anytime a big company, especially someone like Facebook or Google or any of these guys get into the podcast industry, it's wonderful for us, right? Because all it's going to do is create another platform for people to discover us. So I love it. I love that Facebook is, is, is devoting time and energy and resources to help us gain exposure and visibility. So, so I'm really looking forward to all that, seeing how it all plays out. In terms of Spotify getting in the game and doing exactly what they're doing, they're really um, they're following the Netflix model and and more. You know, they're they're doing exclusive rights, which is great for you know who really win. I'm using this term very loosely. Washed up celebrities, <laughs> you know, not 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 washed up, but you know they're they're kind of irrelevant. Let's take for example Jason Bateman, who had a lot of success in Arrested Development, relaunched his his brand and and. And, and, his, and his career. And then he started, you know, doing a lot of movies. He was the everyday man. He's got smart list now with Will Arnett. Um, and I forgot the other name of the actor from uh, Will and Grace. But anyway, there's the three of them in smart list just got bought for, I think, $60 million. Amazon, maybe they're the ones benefiting. Why? Because they're bringing a tribe of people that were fans from their shows and movies. And who, who out of that whole sort of Hollywood pool wouldn't take a $60 million paycheck because television isn't knocking on their door anymore. Movies aren't knocking on their door anymore. So they're winning, right? They, they got baked in communities and fans that they can bring over to the podcasting industry and, 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 and sign exclusive rights, um, which is great. Now for us, what does it, what does it mean for us? It's more visibility, it's more awareness and validation that we're in an industry that's making money, right? Because when I started, and I don't know about you, how long you've been doing this, Miko, but everyone asks, what's the ROI on podcasting? You know, and my answer was always, you know, taking from Gary Vee, what's the, what's the ROI on your mom? You can't calculate it. Well, I spoke to him recently on his podcast and he said, um, he said, oh, I got an upgrade to that answer. It's a hundred million dollars for Joe Rogan. That's the ROI. <laughs> it's the whatever it was for Dax Shepard. That's the ROI. Like these podcasters, and now with Smartless, that's look how much money people are making. It's money to be made. Yep. So it's, I think there's um, a latest report about podcast advertising this year. It's getting 
bigger compared to a previous year. So, which means podcasting is getting noticed. Yeah. Here's the cool thing about that, and for me and for you, Miko. Corporate America has not figured it out yet. They're just figuring it out. Think of corporate America as a gigantic cruise liner, a big, big, big shipment container ship. And for them to navigate and course correct and turn that wheel, you know, 0.1 degree to the right, two degrees to the right, takes a long time. So for them to pivot and say, yes, let's take all the budget from billboards on the highway and commercials on television, all the stuff that we're used to, direct mail marketing. It's taking them a long time to finally realize, let's stop doing that and let's put it in podcasting. Slowly but surely, they're starting to. They're starting to do it. That's the scary part when that happens because then, then it gets crazy, right? In, 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 in good and bad ways. But what's cool about it for us, smaller podcasters, is the local banks, the local mom and pop, the pizza shop, these guys are going to start to realize I'm going to stop putting money into flyers on windshields and radio ads, and I'm going to start giving it to my local podcast. So that's really cool for us because now I could be a local show promoting local businesses. And now my show is paying for itself. That's what I recommend. If you're a podcaster and you've got a decent following and please understand, you don't need to have 10,000, a hundred thousand downloads to be success. The average podcast, this is the average, gets 200 to 250 plays per show. That's achievable. You can do that. And then you go out and you go talk to the mom and pop, you know, auto body store and go, hey, have you thought about promoting on podcasts? Well, I have me and two other friends. We've got, you know, above average downloads. And then you start figuring out a business model. Go look it up, what the CPM is on that cost per mile. And then you can start making money, even if it's a little, to pay for the editing of your show or to pay for marketing of your show, to hire a VA, to create content out of your show. These are all wonderful things that you could do as a business owner. So this is one question I always ask for my guests. What motivates you to get up in the morning and go to work? <laughs> uh, my family, you know, that's, that's, that's somewhat predictable. Um, you know, providing for them, inspiring them, leading by example. Uh, you know, they know daddy works all the time. You know, that could be good and bad. But when they grow up, their work ethic, uh, they'll pick up from me, hopefully. Um, and my team, dude, it's huge. Like having people around you that you love. I only hire people that I love. I literally tell everyone that I love them and, and, and I appreciate them and everything that they do and everything they provide and finding those people that become family that gets me up, man. That drives me when I wake up because now it's not work. It's fun. Like we're all having fun. We're family. So that's, that's. Do you have any final advice or anything else you want to share with business owners, small business, and also podcasts or oh, people who wanted to start a podcast on their own? Yeah. So I want to give something to your audience so that it can potentially get them started. If they go to podmax.co slash masterclass. That is a course. Uh, it's free and it's go at your own pace. Um, it's only, you know, an hour or so, and it will help you, you know, because I've outlined the tool that I used to develop my personal brand, which was really clarifying my message and my story, um, and how to record them on podcasts and guesting on podcasts. And then also, um, how to speak to a community that eventually builds. You know, as you start to create a personal brand and put yourself out there, people will come and they're going to ask questions and they're going to want help. So it, it sort of breaks it all down, you know, in a linear way. Like, here's what you do first, second, third, fourth. Uh, it's called the four C's. But yeah, I'd love to give that to your audience, podmax.co slash masterclass. Um, and then from there, really, I, I just really want people to understand and know that you have value and worth. You've done something in life where you can inspire someone, even if it's one person, one person to do something, to act on something. If you have imposter syndrome, understand and know that you're one step ahead of someone. There's someone out there that hasn't done one thing that you've done. So put it out there, full transparency and let them know, hey, I'm figuring this out. People love that. They want to relate to you. They don't want someone up there. There's enough people out there that know everything. You know, if you see me as someone who knows everything, you know, then, then, 
I started out not knowing and I still don't know everything. I'm still looking for answers. I'm always looking up and putting my hand up to see who can help um, because I'm always trying to get to the next level. Well, there's always going to be someone that you could put your hand down to and lift them up to get the to get on the, the next rung on the ladder. So, yeah, I would just recommend that anybody out there who's hesitant to just do it. The tools are out there. They're making it very, very easy for you to create and tell your story. And even if you record and you don't put it out there, you know, get used to the just get used to the whole idea of it. And eventually, hopefully you'll get the courage to just put it out there. So that's what I recommend. Thank you for that. How can our listener and audience who's watching here on YouTube, Facebook, connect with you online? Yeah, I mean, if you want to see more of what I'm doing, it's uh, Eric, E-R-I-K, Cabral, C-A-B-R-A-L dot C-O. That's like everything that I'm doing. That's my personal brand. But like I said, uh, podmax.co slash masterclass is really a great way to sort of get started if you want a personal brand or figure out how to clarify your message. Right. Thank you so much for your time, Eric. And um, yeah. thank you for everyone. So see you next week for another episode of Inside Job. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of the day. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Okay. This podcast is brought to you by Guerrilla Podcast Syndicate, powered by Kangaroo Fern Media Lab. Kangaroo Fern is Australia's independent video and podcast management agency with the mission to help individuals and entrepreneurs to start their own podcasts and harness the power of podcasting. Book now via www.kangaroofern.com.